عمر حبيبي thank you for coming on the show anytime buddy صراحة I'm really impressed with your content recently thank you I've been following you a few months ago you were you had I think something around 100k plus mm. within few months you just uh, doubled and tripled in, in numbers mm. now you're like 400,000 plus January 1st I was 100 can you keep just the mic closer to you January 1st I was at one just keep it like one inch away from your uh, here mouth. this close yeah, yeah yeah just one inch yeah. January 1st I exactly was yeah <laughs> January 1st, I was 115. 115, January 1st. And now you are 400? 465. 465. 179 as of this morning. People were following you initially because you were posting awesome content about motivation mm-hmm. and um, how to get yourself together because you're such a great salesman Nick, and you have Thanks. that sales mentality. Yeah. You're such a great entrepreneur. And people were following you for that, but then things start changing. Yeah. Can you talk about that for a second? Right, so uh, I was posting a lot of uh, videos. So my following started, obviously, I've had, I've had the good fortune of being in the media. Um, so I started posting a lot of videos to kind of just, you know, spread my thoughts a little bit more. And I wasn't doing it for anybody else. I was doing it for myself. Um, I genuinely be- Okay, how, how much closer do I have to get this? Just keep it straight. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, like, yeah. like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you can drop I it down a little bit. <laughs> right. This is better. Because it's a podcast, so you have to keep the sound really okay, fine. Let me yeah, just fix yeah. up my camera. All right. Okay. So um, this started essentially where I was starting to post some videos. I had good response on the videos, and uh, I was doing it predominantly for me. I, I, I genuinely believe the best form of giving is selfish. It comes from a selfish place, because otherwise you can't sustain it and keep it for the rest of your life. So I was selfishly doing that, because it made me feel good to help people out. And one thing led to another. I started getting a lot of uh, comments from people asking me, hey, can you... Can you say it in Arabic? You know, I, I would love to understand what you're saying, but I don't, right? Mm. And some of them will do that in Arabic, and I read a little bit of Arabic. Some of them do that with super broken English. So I figured, okay, you know what? Let me just put a subtitle okay. to whatever I was saying. Um, so I started putting subtitles in English and subtitles in Arabic. Okay. That started in December. And that video just completely took off. And um, so I kept on doing subtitles. And but it was purely business talk. Uh, it, self-motivating. It, it still predominantly is yeah. business yeah. talk. It's predominantly still around topics that I get a lot of DMs on. Uh, people, of course, as of late, I put up one or two videos that were different, but it's still predominantly around confidence, around mindset. Mindset is, is a big thing for me. Uh, and of course, then I started talking a little bit about English, and I'll explain why if you want. Okay. I would like to know why. Yeah, I mean... Like I said, everybody started asking me to, to, to put in subtitles. I put in the subtitles. And then I started realizing that people were, one, thanking me for, the, for teaching them how to speak English. Now, I was talking about, like, mindset exactly. or entrepreneurship or whatever. And then people were actually using the subtitle and the translation to learn English. Wow. And so that kind of, you know, triggered something. And I'm like, you know what, let me, let me try at least to help. And, and I started getting a lot of DMs. Okay. Can you teach me how to speak English? Uh, you know, how did you learn English? Especially when people realize that right? So as soon as people started realizing that I learned English, at a probably... A you just told of, me um, behind the cameras that you start learning at the age of 17, which is crazy. Because yeah. uh, let's explain things um, in details. In Canada, Mont- you, you lived in Montreal and Montreal yeah. was um, it's French dominant. Yeah. It's, it's the main language is French. It's not English. I mean, th- there's obviously a lot of pockets in Montreal that speak English. Yeah. But, but I went to French high school. I was an English beginner throughout high school. I actually never graduated past English beginner in high school. Wow. Uh, but I, I, one of my teachers in the last year of high school in English beginners uh, gave us an assignment to basically watch 30 minutes of TV. And I loved watching movies and TV. Yeah. Uh, 30 minutes of English TV and summarize it. Right. And so uh, up until that point, I was watching like Rambo dubbed in French, man. Like wow. Sylvester Stallone sounds so much smarter in French. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I started watching Rambo dubbed in French, right? So, so up until that point, I was only watching French dubbed television, French dubbed movies, movie theater dubbed in French, right? Wow. Uh, started watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I started summarizing it. And I just, you know, something completely clicked between watching, doing what I really like doing, which was you know, watching good content and uh, going to class. And it just kind of blend together. And now I'm obviously, some consider me a native speaker. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, what your story, it, it gives no excuse to anybody who is uh, living in the Middle East and saying, oh, we don't really speak English in the Middle East. You were in the French part of Canada. So yeah. to me, it's the same thing. Maybe your English level was similar to somebody who's, uh, who's studying here. No, no different. I mean, even yeah. in, my, in my high school, you play around. The friends that I had, it was only French. Yeah. We, we yeah. never spoke English. So it's not like I was surrounded by English speakers. Of course, after high school, when I started getting a little bit more used to English, I then went to study in English, and I, but, but I had a very solid base at that point. Okay. Right? Uh, but throughout but when high you, when school... You, when you went to university, you were, your English was not that great. It got better. Over, okay. over, over time, it got much better, of course. Because so then as was, soon as I started learning, yeah. it just took on, and then you're practicing, and now, now you start watching TV, more TV in English. Yeah. You start being attracted to people that speak English to kind of practice with them. And one thing leads to another. Okay. And it's, it's, it's really about, you know, a lot of work and practice. Okay, so people would not get confused. The people who are watching you right now and they don't know you, I just want to drop them real quick. The reason we're talking about him learning English at such a late age is because Amar right now started something amazing. It's called English.com, <laughs> where you guys can learn English. The Arabic speakers can learn English. And the fact that he learned English at such a late stage that he's giving you the same format, how he learned English, but in more details and more helpful techniques. Yeah, and a much better framework as well. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't set out like I was telling you before. I wasn't mm. setting out to build Englees.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. At first, I was setting out to try to help out every single person on my platform who was asking me to teach them how to speak English. Yeah. So I reached out to a lot of the, you know, the big providers, the big players worldwide. And, and they completely didn't understand what I was trying to do. I was telling you guys, I have a good following. Every single one of them wants to speak English. I want to help them out. How can we do something to help them out? And they just scratched their heads and some of them were sending me distribution agreements that just made absolutely no sense. So then I'm like, okay, well, that, that's you know, obviously a challenge, but also an opportunity. If they don't understand the, the, the impact that we can have here in the region, mm -hmm. let me try to do that on my own. So then the next step was trying to, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I was trying to kind of partner with companies that, are, that have done something similar. Of course, for other save languages. some time. Yeah. Save some time, save some money. And, and, and that led me to say, you know what, let me just build the whole thing myself. And so we have two major products. One of them, uh, three packages, but two major products. So okay. one of them is the video player. And if you want, I can, I can kind of walk you through it. So you, you okay. and, and imagine this being a Justin Bieber song or Celine Dion song, right? Okay. Uh, you see a subtitle here, and right below that, there's uh, the translation. Arabic subtitle. So this is English, yeah, and this is Arabic. Exactly. Okay. Now you can click on any of the English words. Okay, accepted. And then a definition and different applications of that word automatically pops up on the right. It gives you everything. 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 Every single different uh, nuances, uh, context of that word, everything. So this is kind of step one. Right now, let's say you're starting to learn those words and you're getting more comfortable. Okay. You can start testing your comprehension by actually hiding the, either the subtitle or the uh, or the translation. Exactly, you could hi hide, hide both. both. Yeah. Wow. Okay. One or both. You can play. Uh, press play again. Exactly. Now I speak fast. Everybody accused me of that. So now press the yes. Hi. My name is Omar. Press it again. Now, I sound like a drunken sailor here, but <laughs> ultimately, it's it helps you with pronunciation. So that you can actually practice. So wow. essentially, this is how I learned, but this is how I learned on steroids. I've, I've yeah. taken how I've learned yeah. and I've developed all the tools around it to enable someone to learn even better. Now, this is me. That's a boring video explaining yeah. about English, right? Yeah. Hopefully not so boring. Okay. But imagine this video being a you know car review. Uh, imagine this video. You can being get any video on YouTube. Any video that's on YouTube will be curating that content specifically. Of course, every video we want to curate it with uh, learning in mind. So we want learning and content consumption to go hand in hand. Okay, I thought I can just get any random video on YouTube. I'm it's not. No, it's not okay. any random video. We select those videos. Okay. But it's exactly like let's say Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. I learned because I loved watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. So the idea is for us to bring super cool content. So what do you have? Can I see where's your content? Uh, not yet. So okay. we'll be launching officially on July first. All right. Okay. Yeah. This is so just a soft opening. This is, this is soft. This is okay. a soft launch. So on July first, we'll have content from a Justin Bieber song or Adele song or car review or a cool blogger that's doing something funny. Uh, so, so my same, podcast, uh, your podcast, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can put that there. Okay. Th that I'll charge you for. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, okay. ultimately the idea is that for people to learn while they're being entertained. And that for me was the best form of learning. And, yeah. and I brought that. So that's the first product. 
The second product is the one that, that's really kind of a game changer as well. Now, this one is, is quite new. The second one is the ability to offer online live classes to people, right? So with a tutor in real time, online, where you could ask questions and learn at your pace. Yeah. For a price point that many people in their markets pay per hour, I'll be doing that price point per month. Wow. So imagine in, in, in your market you're paying, there's some markets that are paying 20 to $40 an hour. Imagine I give you 40 hours a month for that. No way. For the same price. 40 hours a month for $50. 50 hours a month, 60 hours a month, less than 50, way less than 50. Right? Can we see the price list or can we talk no, about it? We're okay, not going to okay. talk about the price list. Okay. But uh, it works out to, uh, if you're taking one class per day, it works out to less than a dollar per day. And this is like one-on-one -on -one with the coach? No, it's, it's a classroom session. So it's up between five to six, seven students, something like okay. that, right? It's a classroom session, and uh, the teachers are fluent in English, sound like me, okay. and fluent in Arabic as well. Okay. So the teachers will be able to answer questions in real time. If you're a beginner, you don't have to be worried and about... And that happens on Skype, like everybody's... Or... Uh, yeah, so we have a different technology that we're integrating okay. with than, than, than Skype, but yeah, so that similar happens... Thing. Similar thing. Similar. Okay. Right, so uh, you know whether we apply video or not, uh, it's it's irrelevant at the moment. So so okay. I'm not sure if we're gonna have like five six video sessions. It's not that I don't want to. It's predominantly understanding how different internet speeds in different markets drive that 100%, experience. Hundred percent. So, no, but ultimately we could get into, you know, there's five people, there are five video conference calls happening. Okay. Right now I won't talk too much about video because I'll only talk about it when I test it and I'm comfortable with it. And right now we're still in pre-testing I'm phase. saying obviously it's in the pipeline. It's one of the plans. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but it will be live. So it will be a live at least uh, a teleconference call. So you, you, you log in, you see the actual uh, course um, on the PowerPoint presentation format. Yeah. You'll have a teacher that's there that's explaining slide by slide, taking questions, calling on you to repeat after them or to introduce yourself in English or to take an order at a restaurant in English or so on and so forth. So taking you from A1 level, those are European levels, A1 level to C2 level. And, and I have over 100 courses developed with hundreds more in the pipeline by instructional designers. So this is not me sitting down developing the course. Yeah. Those are instructional designers are actually professionals in developing those courses. Wow. And the teachers will be driving a very strict curriculum to bring someone from A1 to C2. A big part of a pillar, a big part of a vision is to impact one million lives in the Arab world. And one of the first things I told you is, 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 is being good is actually good for business. So you being, don't, being what? Being good okay. is good for business. You don't build a billion dollar company unless you actually impact lives. But right? we define, we go back. What do you mean being good? Being good in what? So this anything you do. So okay. add, adding value, changing a life, wanting. So my driver yeah. is not money. My driver is impact because I know impact is actually highly profitable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my driver is not how do I make money now? And this is. Whoever we're competing against, their first driver is, how do, we make, how do we make this profitable? I couldn't care less about this right now. I know it'll be profitable one way or another. If I'm impacting a million people, I'm making money. Is this how you follow everything you do in life? or uh, just, the, it's it's just impact. Like impact is more important. Impact okay. is always more important. The same way I've built my platform. If, if anyone is watching this that's actually followed me will understand that I barely ever talk about any brand except for my own. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do a lot of... Uh, I, I'm not saying that I will never do and I have nothing against those who You don't who do, do ads. I, I, I don't. But just simply because... Not that I, I'll never say never, right? Yeah. So I, and I have nothing against people who do that. I think they each his own, right? Yeah. But this isn't what I'm driving because I believe in the value of my platform differently. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, the same, it's the same way. If I want to impact a million lives, if I want English to impact a million people and change a million lives, the only way I could do that is by making sure that the price point is reaching those million people. True. So I'm thinking about how much can they possibly afford and in working inwards, not how much do I need to make and work outwards. Because if I think of that, I can impact a million people. I'll impact 50,000, mm. but not a million. True, right? true, so true. So for me, my driver is a million people in. Okay, okay. And then if, 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 if I'm not losing too much money, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll yeah. monetize that later. I'm not, I'm not too worried about You're not about in a that. rush about money. And Never. Make, yeah, yeah, yeah. Impa look, impact is incredibly profitable, profitable, both on the personal level, the personal sense of fulfillment, because you, you leave a legacy. You, make an imp you change a million people's life, you're living forever. Yeah, of course. And financially, you could make money by... Yeah you know, making an impact.
It's highly profitable. And especially you hear it a lot. Um, a lot of um, non-English speakers, they would say whether they're Arab or Chinese, whatever. Like if I speak English, I would fill in the blank. I would just like take over everything. I would be this in business or I would be that amazing comedian or whatever it is. It's just like the fact that if, if you're making it easy for people to learn English and those people no are... No more excuses. Yeah, but they're saying it themselves. What I like about your crowd is uh, they're, they're engaged and um, they want to. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's an amazing feeling. Yeah, yeah, put the money aside, everything. I see them like going and like, oh, yeah, Omar, can you, can you say that? Can you? I was like, oh, that's beautiful. Like, you mean it's like a little family of 400,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially on the yeah. lives. Those are yeah. fun because usually it's like, can you speak Arabic? Where are you from? Can yeah, you yeah, speak yeah, Arabic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, ultimately, look, if, if, if you're helping people and it comes from the right, from a right place, you, you, you get, you get, 10,000 times that value back. So for me, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. And I, I put out a video not long ago saying, uh, you know, doing good is good for business. Doing yeah. good, if, you do, if you do good, it's actually more likely to be more profitable in the long term, right? And that's what a lot of people kind of, a lot of people miss that. But it's not the only way. Sorry? Let's be honest. Like, it's not the only way, like being good. Like a lot of people like would make it in business if they're selfish, if they're... Uh, if no, they're greedy, it, that's what they're I'm trying not to say. really good. So this yeah. isn't coming from a selfless place. Because I think if you're, if you're giving selflessly, it's not scalable or sustainable. You're okay. going to give up at one point. Okay. I'm giving selfishly. It makes me feel good to do this. So my driver is it makes me feel good. Yeah, at so, least you're being honest about it. I respect that. that. I really it. respect that. It makes that. me feel really, really good. You're not saying you're acting like Buddha. You're like, oh, I'm just like no, trying to... No, help. whoever <laughs> is, is probably lying. There, there's there's yeah. another angle to it. At the end True. of the day... And, and it just so happens that, that you know... I respect that, yeah. Legacy is highly important. Yeah. Everybody leaves. It's what yeah. you leave behind that's important. What's but legacy could, be, uh, could just be financial. A lot of people, like, when they say legacy, it's just like having a billion dollar and just having that money for their grand, grand son. I've never met a billionaire in a cemetery. Ever. What, what do you mean? There is no billionaire in a cemetery. There's a name left. The only thing you'll ah, leave behind is okay, a name. Okay. It's people to remember you by. Yeah. Right. And you know what? Here's a good example that being that 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 doing something you're super passionate about yeah. is highly profitable. I guarantee you Steve Jobs doesn't have profits driving, didn't have profits driving what he was doing. He was doing this out of sheer obsession and passion. Right? Yeah. 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 That's high. He's a billion. He died a billionaire, but people don't remember him for his money. Yeah. People remember him. But for do you think, how I don't changed. think Steve was about money. But, but you're right, he made money. Like he was, and yeah. he left a massive legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah people yeah. talk about him as a, as a genius that changed things, that changed entire industries, that made an impact, like, like uh, uh, Bell made an impact. Or whatever, yeah. right? So making an impact, he died a billionaire. But what people are remembering is not the fact that he had billions of dollars. I'm, I'm just trying to think about it, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about if, if you leave a legacy, does it always equal money? It doesn't need to. It, that's what I'm trying to think about. It doesn't, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. So for mm. me, it's... it's of course, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a living. I'm trying to leave something behind. But what's driving me is impact. Not for impact's sake, but because I believe impact leaves a bigger legacy and impact is highly profitable. That's it. Okay. I don't want to... I could teach... I could put a goal of teaching 5,000 people and charging them $2,000. Or I could put a goal of teaching a million people and charging them $10. Okay. Right? My goal is teaching a million people. Right. So it isn't about trying to, to, to it's not a short term game for me. It's a much more it's a, it's a longer marathon. Right. OK. okay. And, and if you're going in and saying, OK, if, if I want to impact as many people as possible, the more people you, you impact, the more likely you are to have a bigger legacy. Yeah. At the end of the day. Right. But you could impact a billion people, but it might not make money. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like you, for example, if you turn this website for free and you just do it like a charity. case, I, I won't be able to afford it. Let's say you could. Let's right. say you could. Right. If I can, great, but I can't. Yeah. The reality is yeah. I can't. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so you, and look, at the end of the day, I've had a lot of people saying this. Oh, you know, why, why can't you do it for free? Well, first of all, I can't. You're not, yeah, you're not in a position to do it. it it's, it's, it's not about that. It's, it's, things don't cost money all the time because of profit. Things cost money because of quality. Right? Yeah, uh, but it could be wanna, a non-profit. You want to you wanna learn English? Just Google. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah You have a lot of information on Google. But you don't because there's an abundance of information that hasn't been curated for you in a way that enables you to go from A1 to A2, A2 to yeah. B1, B1 to B2, so on and so forth. 
Yeah. So of course, all of that information. I, have, I haven't seen such thing before on the internet. Probably lack of research, or maybe it's new. Yeah. I haven't seen. It. There's yeah. parts of it that are extremely new. There's parts yeah. of it that that that's basically modeling other other models. But at the end of the day, yeah. why do you go to school? Any information you get in school, by the way, is available on Google. Any. Of course. Why do you go to school? Because it structures it. Why does a school pay? Why do you have to pay school? Because there's a guy that's standing there that's actually holding you by the hand and walking you through that. And, and that the discipline, like when you pay for something, you were going to do it. Not yeah. just that. I have live tutors. Okay, you're telling me, Omar, give it away for free. I have live tutors. I don't Those personally tutors. agree with it, by the way. I'm yeah. just playing devil's advocate. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I have live tutors. Those tutors are, yeah. are, are doing this to, to earn a living. Yeah, of course. So, so, so on and so forth. So that, that is the cycle that enables me to actually develop. Because at the end of the day, uh, highly successful business is probably one of the best forms of charity. Okay. Because then at the end of the day, you, you end up, if I could hire uh, uh, 10,000 people, to impact another 990, I just impacted a million lives. Yeah, because yeah. those 10,000 people have families, and they're feeding their families, and they're feeding the economy, and they're probably creating other jobs and feeding other uh, uh, companies that have other jobs, so on and so forth. So the ripple effect of successful business is highly valuable for society. Yeah, of course, and so, you connect cultures. Like uh, this random person sitting somewhere might fall in love with a girl from the Netherlands, and they both would speak English. Like you just. I feel like English is really important. I personally think everybody should speak English, especially this. I mean, look, yeah. th to be honest with you, you, you could be fluent in English and not succeed in life, and you could not know a word of English and be a success story. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's, it's what you want to do out of it. For me, that's a massive tool. It helps you, but it starts with you. Mm. Uh, I, I, I did a video uh, talking about that, saying, uh, okay, if you want to be fluent in English, you need three things. Mentality, tools, and hard work. The good news is, I have the tools. The bad news is I cannot have a mentality and hard work. You have to have that. So if you don't have the right mentality and you're not going to put in the work, yeah. it doesn't matter what I bring to you. You're never going to learn. Okay, I'm, I, I'm glad you brought this up because um, I could learn English. I could put a website up like yours, sign up, learn English in a few months, a few years, doesn't matter. But learning mentality is just, I feel like it's, it's spoken about a lot, but there's no way to teach a mentality. I don't, I don't know what's happening. What do you, what's your thoughts on that? Like, I think it's framing it. So okay. it's contextual. It's, it's, um, you could tell me don't be lazy, don't do this. No, no, yeah, no. So, yeah. so instead of asking a question of saying, um, this can't be done. Okay. Or I can't, uh, instead of making a statement saying, I can't do this. Yeah. Ask a question, say, how can I do this? All of a sudden, your, your context is completely different. If you say, I can't be someone, or I can't be somebody, Okay. Ask yourself the question, how can I become somebody? Okay, how can I get the micro closer to you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. There we go. Here, is okay. that better? Yeah. <laughs> so how can I? That's a good one, actually. That's, good. That's a good way to do it. So it's, it's about reframing yeah. your, your, your state of mind, right? Um, that mindset that's different between somebody saying it can't be done without having tried mm. and somebody else saying, um, I've tried, I've failed, let me try again, do something else to try to make it happen. So the mindset is really powerful because it actually shifts half empty, half full. Have you always had the same mindset or no, has it hell changed? No, that I don't know. I, I never had that. For, for me, this is, this is not something that you're born with. This is something that you, that you acquire over time by learning from other people. I mean, for me, I've had an entrepreneurial uh, venture where I was sitting with a bunch of billionaires in a room. And, and you know, the, the, I think the, 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 the lowest value in the room besides myself was somebody worth probably $300 million. And they refused to quit. Now, these guys have every reason in the world to quit. They have every reason in the world to say, ah, let's hang in the towel. They're living, they're going to have their yacht and their sports car and their three mansions and whether they fail or succeed in this venture. But they refused to fail. That for me was the first kind of, wait, wait a minute. If they're refusing to fail, why should I accept it? If they're refusing to, to quit, yeah. why should I accept it? So, of course, I talk about don't feel failure because it's part of the process. But they have passion for competition, Omar. Sorry? They probably have passion for competition. No, Something they have a fear of quitting. Same. Different. Like they, no. yeah. It's it's for for them they don't like giving up. So they'll keep on trying and they, they they'll keep on pivoting and they'll keep on, on, on doing whatever it takes until you know, until their last breath. But how do you think they got there? What what like what by what not quitting? It? By not quitting. Every single one of them. I've spoken to every single one of anybody that's ever been super successful. Yeah. They tell you that it takes 10 years to become an overnight success, right? True. Anybody that's ever been super successful yeah. 
hasn't been super successful because they've been lucky. They've been super successful because they just haven't given up, right? And, and the feeling of quitting is actually at the highest level, the closer you are to success, right? Because then success is, is, if success is, a, is an offshoot of failures and trial and error and trial and error, yeah. you want to feel like quitting after you've tried 132 times and failed 132 times. Yeah. That's, that feeling is much stronger than trying the first time and failing the first time. Right? Yeah. So, and that's why a lot of people don't understand about failure and, and, and have that fear of failures is they believe failure is actually a, a, a separated from success. It's not. It's a part of it. You do not become successful by not trying multiple times and you're only going to be right once or twice, right? Mm, if you're mm. lucky in your life, you might be right once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but that also means that you've been wrong 93 times mm. and that's just part of the process. So the, the more failures you kind of get, the more closer you could be to being successful because you don't really lose. You learn or you make money. Yeah. So the, the learning part is highly valuable to actually build the next step and the next step. Those are just steps. Those are steps in the, st in, in the staircase. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And every failure gets you closer to the top rather than just kind of takes you three steps back. If you learn from it, if you keep on doing the same thing and keep on failing, that's the definition of insanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this close enough, by the way? That's perfect. All Thank right, you. <laughs> uh, to me, it just, uh, I'm, I think my mission in life is just to try to figure out the why and how it happens. Uh, I, was, I was listening to um, a guy called Naval on Joe Rogan. That, um, a podcast happened, I think, a week ago. And he's, uh, he's invested in, um, in Facebook and, and I think Uber and Twitter. And he's talking about, the, it's just the mentality is key. And of course, we all know the mentality, the mentality, the mentality. But he's saying, if we bring a millionaire who has the mentality and strip him out of his money and make him lose everything, in five years, he'll become rich again, start from zero because he has the skill list. He, he, he knows, like he knows what's happening. He knows when not to quit, when to, do. and that's, that's the thing. Like, it's just fascinating, like when not to quit, when to quit. How do you know, like, how do you it's know not, yeah. For me, I never really call it quitting. It's, yeah. it's always pivoting. You know, if you're into a losing battle, yeah. right? How often do you start losing? Not before you quit, but before you decide what other battle to fight instead, right? So what do you have in terms of, you know, there's some things, I think one of my biggest inspirations is Gary Vee, and he said at one point, he's not born tall, right? He can't be about the best basketball player in the world, no matter how hard he's going to try. Yeah. So what are the tools that he's born with? What's his reality? What's your reality? What do you have today? What can you use today to actually help you become better tomorrow and so on and so forth? But again, you said like you're, you're, he's not born with it, but like I believe like he's born, like Gary Vee is born to be Gary Vee, meaning he's, he has that energy, whatever, like he brought it to social media or not. He, he's that guy who's like always loud right. in the room. But, but if, if yeah. you know, it, what I'm talking about is separating wishful thinking, separating hopes and dreams, separating uh, things that might not, uh, you know, I get you, but Go, can I say something? Sure. He said not everybody can become a Beyonce, not everybody can become a Michael yeah. Jordan. And I say not everybody can become a, um, a Gary Vee because he's, yeah. he's that guy. Like People are trying to be Gary Vee, but they're not going to be Gary Vee because they're not. They don't have the same energy that makes people, a Gary Vee. People should try to just be themselves for, for, for who they are. Yeah, but this is what I disagree with Gary Vee because I follow him and I love him, but I agree with some of what he says like post and do and like everybody's trying to follow the same strategy as him mm -hmm. but like it doesn't suit you it just, you, why are you trying to be him no. as you said yeah no, 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 it's different right so if uh, it's, he doesn't say but like if, if you're if you're 13 years old and you don't have failures and 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 successes behind you mm. you might not want to talk about failures and successes too much exactly right i talk about failure because i failed more often than the average guy right so i could talk about it freely yeah. Yeah, I have a list of failures that cost me a lot of money, <laughs> okay. right? Uh, and I also have a list of successes that brought me a lot of money. And so for me, that's a comfort zone that I'm in. I'm talking about something I, I know how to talk about. Now, just to kind of add to it, and I think that there's one line of Gary Vee that I said once has resonated. I, I want to tattoo this on myself one day. I don't yes. need to buy the Jets. I need to try to buy the Jets. Oh, yeah, yeah. And being, being in love with that process, be, like really understanding that it's not just about the end game, but the actual journey, yeah. that is highly, that's, that's something you either, you, you're either feeding off of or yeah. you're not. There isn't an in-between. You cannot fake that. There, yeah. There's no faking. You're going to give up very fast, right? So I think the, 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 the main premise is for you to kind of find your passion, find what you what you would like to do. Yeah. Make sure that you have the tools for it. 
or acquire the tools for it. Again, if you would love to be better than Michael Jordan and you're four foot 11, the chances are stacked against you. You know, that might be wishful thinking to try. I'm not saying give up, but I'm saying, eh, you might not be using your tools to the best kind of end results. Yeah. So just understand what you have to play with today. What you, you right now have to play with today. What you're doing right now, mm. 90% of the people watching this are not doing, but they're talking about it. You're doing a podcast. This is in your studio. This is in your cameras, but you're doing a podcast. Ha- guaranteed, out of 100 people, 95 want to get into having a podcast one day. When they could afford to buy the camera, and when they could afford to have this, and when they could afford to have... It's not yours. Rent the guitar. You're doing, you're doing it anyway, right? So it's not about when I will, is if you can start and then figure it out along the way, right? And I think that... I'm, I'm a big subscriber over... Uh, I did a post once. A lot of people were correcting me, and I was doing it on purpose. Like, you know how it's ready, aim, fire? Mm. I said, ready, fire, aim. And then everybody's like, hey, this is not how you do it. You ready, aim, fire? I'm like, no, that's the point. Is don't try to over plan. Don't try to overthink. Don't try to be in a, don't try to be in the best possible spot to get started. Get started, and then you realize it along the way. And I think that what you're doing right now is you got started, and you'll realize along the way. Before you buy the $10,000 camera, a 3,000 one might do the job. Yeah, it was not a single cam, just uh, over there. Yeah, like, yeah. So before yeah. you aspire to get Will Smith to talk to you, mm. you get smaller people than Will Smith to talk. And if you end up with Will Smith, by the way, some people will call you lucky. Yeah. Right? But yeah, the reality yeah. is no one knows what you've been through to get to that level. And I think that's, yeah. that's what it takes. And not everybody yeah. is willing to... Like, be honest, if it wasn't for the 16 episodes, now you're going to be number 17, maybe you would not have came as well. Like, that's the truth, and I know it, and I'm okay with it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you yeah. didn't do that episode one, yeah. and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, yeah. now, personally, I would have come, because at the end of the day, it gives me a different venue and a different vantage okay. point of video. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. But you're giving me some, You're giving me value. Yeah. You're giving me uh, episodes that I could use as well. Yeah. So I'll come. That's yeah. not a problem. Yeah. But if you didn't do that, and I just right? called you like, hey, And you just called me cold call. And you don't have a proof of concept. And you haven't tried. And you haven't done anything. I mean, I, I still would come again because I have a different vantage point. Personally. Yep, you. But maybe yeah. other people might not. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. And, and, and I guarantee you, the amount of people... And this is the weird part. Is, is I put up a video about that. And a lot of people really liked it. But this was actually a very bad performing video for me for some odd reason. Why? What I, have, you, I, have, what I, have an, I have an assumption. It was about basically everybody talks about the value of social media and no one does anything about it. This is a $15 mic. This is a $10 oh, yeah, backdrop. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, on, so yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah. A lot of people really like that video, but yeah. it, was, it was the worst performing video because I feel like sometimes people don't like to hear it the, like, like it's supposed to be, right? At the end of the day, there's so many people that are making up excuses for where they are today. So many. Okay, can I add to that? Yeah. Uh, can I get you another coffee and come back? We can. We can stop and get you another coffee. No, I'm good. I really actually like ice. Those <laughs> okay. who know me really understand that. Like, <laughs> okay, what, what I really want to say is people start and they stop maybe because they're not the simplicity of passion. Maybe they're not passionate about it and they just did it just because they have to because everybody else is doing it so they have to do it. So they do it and it's not their thing. They stop. I've done so many things before I got to the podcast and I stopped. Am I ashamed about it? No. No. Yeah. See, doing and stopping is very different than doing and quitting. So for me, I'm actually a big proponent of, and if you want to find out what you want to do, do 20 things and you find it out. Yeah. I'm, I've done 20, 30, 40 things to find yeah. out. A, wait a minute. That's not me. That's, that's, I don't like that. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, but it's, it's about pivoting from it. The right mindset is trying it and then figuring out and then saying, that the wrong mindset is saying, well, that, that won't work. Have you tried it? No. So how do you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's uh, the wrong mindset. Fair point. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the whole jumping to negative conclusions without having tried it, without yeah. having experienced it. Dude, the last thing I wanted to do last year, the last thing I thought about last year, in December 2018, was developing an English teaching site. That's the last thing I thought about. Like, I didn't even think of that. Right? And, and the only way that I'm here today is because I kind of, huh, fine, let me... Okay, you know what? Let me do it. And now I'm like, oh, I love this. Yeah. This is actually people responding to it. I've had thousands of people respond to it. I've had thousands of registrations. And I'm like, geez, this is, this is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. 2018, this wasn't in plans. Yeah. Right? That started early 2019. And maybe you could not, you could not have done it at 2014 as well because 
whatever you've done in your life led you to this. So yeah. it, like, because you Ex- started that, you got oh, yeah. fame here, you got See, this, you got that. Boom. That's another Perfect. thing. So, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm well in my thirties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really well in my thirties. If you asked me ten years ago, I would have told you that I know everything I needed to know about life. And now I tell you how naive and stupid I was ten yeah. years ago. Mm. The reality, and it's not because I'm smarter today. It's simply because I'm more exposed. That's it. The more exposure you have, the bigger the crystal ball you have, mm. right? The more hindsight you have, right? The more foresight you could develop. Mm. Anybody that thinks they know it all at age 20 or 30 or 40 haven't actually realized the point. that The only way I realize right now that I don't know it all is because at 28, man, I really thought I got it all covered. And I'm just have enough introspection to say, oh my God, were you an idiot back then? Mm. And now at 38, I'm telling myself, you know what? You better not fall on the same trap you fell 10 years ago. You don't know Idiot. Jack right now, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. You don't know anything right now. So, and, and it, th- that actually put me into learning mode rather than knowing mode. So what's the learning mode to you? Where do you get your learning from? What, what, what's, what's your source? <laughs> I did a video about that. Like, okay. I, I strive to be the dumbest guy in a room. <laughs> okay, why? Stri- like, b- because if you're the dumbest guy in the room, by definition, you're learning the most. So you're just a good listener, let's say. No, it's, 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 it's if you surround yourself with people that are better than you. Ah, oh, okay, right? I get you. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So if you surround yourself with people that, that are better than you, this is where you're actually putting yourself in the best position to learn. If mm. you surround yourself with people that are not better than you, they're likely learning from you and not learning from them. Right? So the best example I could give you is, is 10 years ago, I had a great scholarship for a great school that I won't name now. Um, and I didn't take it. And I decided to go to London Business School and pay through the nose for it. Why? Because that scholarship for the grade school, the person who's given me that scholarship told me one line that completely threw me off. They said, Omar, you would add so much value to the classroom. And I walked out of there going, wait a minute. I don't want to be the smart guy in that classroom. I'll never learn anything. I, I, want, to, I want to walk in a classroom where everybody else is smarter than me. Because now I'm the sponge. Now I'm just basically, you know, just picking people's brains and ideas and, and that are better than, have, that have been more exposed to me and, and learning a lot more than them. I, I would be the, the, the like, like for that. lack of a better word, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're the sucker. You're not, you're not learning anything here. I don't yeah. know if you're going to beep that or not, but yeah. you're not learning much. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. And so that, that is a, a trigger and that's not coming on the back of being, um, of wanting to be, uh, uh, smart or uh, full of wisdom. That's coming on the back of me when I was 28 thinking that I knew it all. And now at 38 realizing how stupid I was back then. And the only difference wasn't my IQ. It was my EQ and my exposure. Mm. It was is how many things am I ex- have I been exposed to over the past 10 years that enabled me to say, hey, if I go down that path, this is the predictable outcome. Why? Because I've gone down that path before and this was yeah. the predictable outcome. Yeah. Right. So it's just the more paths you go down, the more likely you are to have that crystal ball. So you start putting yourself um, in a, okay, let's say somebody who doesn't have the access to smart people, somebody who's just in a, in a remote place and in a country that does not have all these entrepreneurs and the business happening and they want to snap out and they just want to learn. Having Tom Bilyeu and these people is, is great to, to learn and, and Gary Vee, <laughs> but Experience is, is key. So what, what do you tell us about that? Like how, where, where, like, do you, how, what's your thoughts on risk? How, what's your relationship with risk taking? So for me, I always actually, I never ever ever factor in best case scenario because best case scenario is, is, a, is, a, is a holy grail and okay. a dream and then, you know, it's, it's great to have, but if you're gonna go in with best case scenario, you're gonna be really sorely What about worst case scenario? That's what I actually take into account, always. Okay. And my equation is fairly simple. If worst case scenario gets me at the same level or better off than I am today, that's a pretty good deal, right? Mm. I was, uh, anybody knows anything about me, I was a corporate juggernaut for the longest time, right? So yeah. the biggest companies in the world I've worked for, right? Um, and I was very successful and I really, really loved my, my corporate life. And, and when it came time to jump in from corporate to, 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 to entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and it's not that I won't ever go back to corporate, I never say never about anything. I never say never about anything, but mm. it's, it, it wasn't about entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, it's, it wasn't about not liking uh, corporate. It was about being ready for entrepreneurship. And the question I had in my mind at the time, 
when I kind of jump away from corporate and into entrepreneurship was if I get into this new venture and it's an epic failure, mm. will I be at the same level I am today in terms of the learning I would have gotten? If it's an epic success, of course, the answer is yes. I have millions of dollars in the bank and we're good. But if it's an epic failure, where am I compared to today? Yeah. Right. And of course, you make what you want to get out of it. You know, you, 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 get, you get outside what you put in. Right? Yeah. So for me, it was like, okay, does that propel me forward in, in, in a certain industry? Does that propel me forward in society? Will that help my personal brand as well? And if it's an epic failure, where would I be left? And the answer, if the answer is equal to today or slightly mm-hmm. better, I'm jumping. I'm going to take that ch- chance because I'm actually valuing the journey and not the destination. Because mm. if you value the journey and not the destination, you can actually have a proper apples to apples uh, uh, comparison because the destination is an assumption. That's the orange, mm. right? The journey is within your control. If you, if you know, you could predict what's going to happen in the next year, right? In terms of, you know, what's that journey going to be? You're going to go on TV. You're going to talk to media. You're going to experience hiring people. You're going to experience firing people. You're going to experience raising capital, not raising capital, failures, pivots. Are all those culminating in more value than you are today? or at least similar? If the answer is yes, you're taking the right decision to take it. If the only thing you're thinking about is a billion dollars is worth a lot of money, then you're going to be sorely uh, mm. disappointed because then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Because when somebody tells you the journey is, is more important than the destination, it's actually more valuable. It has to be. Otherwise, the destination is just not worth it. Then it's taking too big a risk. Yeah. If the journey to get the uh, $100 million is not worth it because uh, it doesn't actually teach you anything along the way, that's a massive risk. If the journey is worth it more than you were going through today, that's not too bad. And, and th- there's a lot of big speakers that, that really kind of push uh, for that. I met someone yesterday who's a young guy at a university who's getting exposed to so many different startups, to so many different investors, to so many different... And I looked at him and I'm like, dude, he goes, I would do this job for free because that, that learning is so invaluable, Right? And now he's getting paid for his job. And there's a lot of young people out there that won't do that job for free. It's so sad. I don't I, just This topic bothers me. Why don't you want to learn these young grads? Get out and learn. Take an internship somewhere. Find something. You just want to be paid. Are you crazy? Yeah. They're really but crazy. They're, they're, yeah. Because they're valuing. So this is, this yeah. is they're valuing short-term gratification. Yeah. And they're, they're exchanging short-term gratification for long-term achievement. That person that's sitting in that seat has a Rolodex of five, six, eight hundred mega investors, has seen companies fail and, and, and succeed over the past year and a half. Dude, that guy knows more than me right now. If I had the chance to go back, I would take that job in a heartbeat. Hell, if that job came up today, I would take it for free. Yeah. Yeah. Because that exposure, I could do so much with it. It's the same way why I would actually start a business with the risk of failing is what, what will be the, my starting point afterwards? Is that building more steps in my staircase yeah. or not? If it is, my starting point is ahead, not behind. Yeah. Yeah. People, yeah. Don't, people don't judge you on your failures. They, they're inspired by your successes. True. And anybody that looks at me and says, oh, you failed in that. Yeah, while I failed, what the hell were you doing? You were working on making somebody else's dream come true. Mm. While I was... Well, I failed trying to make mine come true. And that has a lot more value. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And to add to the um, interns thing, I've heard, uh, I've heard somebody saying recently, oh man, I love the story. He was saying an intern went to um, a successful entrepreneur and he asked him, he's like, oh, I would like to enter in the company. Uh, I would love to do that. I, w- I would do it for free. And he looked at him and he said, expensive. He's like, what? He's like, I'm free. He's like, expensive. In order f- to be with me and my crew, that's, that's, that's really like, costly like you have to pay a lot in order to learn what i'm what i'm giving you and that's that's the key there is just like people would learn a lot by being with like maybe by hanging out with you for a couple of days filming your story or whatever yeah they, they might learn a lot. why people are doing that with gary v just to learn yeah not to really that, to be with him and get the tags and like yeah. oh he would tag them but no the, just but to learn exa- but the exposure yeah. The exposure. I'm saying you don't have to give them exposure. You don't have to credit them on their social media. No, no, media. forget the credit. I'm yeah, not I'm talking. Saying, yeah, forget about I'm, that. I'm not yeah. talking about social media exposure yeah. when I talk about exposure. I'm talking about being a fly in the wall when Gary Vee is sitting with Bill Gates discussing something. Dude, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. just listening to these guys talk while, while that's, that's happening. Expensive. That's insane. Yeah. 
right? The exposure, what you are exposed to, not your personal exposure on social yeah, media. Forget yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. not worth it. Yeah. What you are exposed to is massive, right? Yeah, yeah, Be yeah. a fly on a wall is so valuable because you get, you basically leapfrog. Remember when I was telling you, uh, you don't know anything until you go through it. Mm. Being exposed is actually the best way to leapfrog going through it. Because now you're sitting down with a bunch of guys who's gone through it. And now they're telling you the learnings. And now mm. you're sitting back going, okay, that's good. This avenue doesn't work. Mm. Okay, I haven't tried it, but he has. Yeah. And I believe he's given it his all. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. now he hasn't succe- succeeded, so I'm not going to try it. Or she yeah. has. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so to me, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful story because I don't know a lot of people who are in the corporate route and they decide to leave it. That's, that's not really the case. Because people are really, it's, it's, it's addictive to have that. It's just, the safety net is addictive. To have your salary at the end of the month, to have your tickets, insurance, blah, blah, blah. For somebody to escape that is, is, is big. If you look at it as escape. Then, then it is escape. Yeah, so for me, it wasn't. I actually really enjoyed my corporate career. I, I, I liked it. I learned yeah. a lot from it. Yeah. Actually, my corporate career made me ready for this one, not the other way around. It wasn't that I was fed up of being in corporate and now I wanted to get into entrepreneurship. But you don't want to do that for the rest of your life. Like I'm saying, whatever, how good it was, you, know you don't what? want to stay I, that. Yeah. So I was an entrepreneur at 19. That was my first company. Okay. I had 50 employees. It was quite successful. At and 19? Then I, at 19. 19 to 22. Uh, to 21. What did you do? Uh, for another day. It's, it's, it's a really long story. But okay. it, was, it was really interesting. It was very... Uh, uh, um, Basically, it was a clearinghouse for magazines. So anyway, long okay. story. Bottom line, uh, it was highly fulfilling, paid me a lot of money. Okay. And I felt like I was Superman. Okay. And then I w- went to corporate and, and I started learning how little I knew about a lot of things. Right. So I started learning a lot. So for me, it was a sponge. So getting into entrepreneurship w- was never like, oh, now I'm fed up of corporate. It was like more, now I feel more ready for entrepreneurship. Right. I went into, into an MBA program, which is one of the best in the world, thinking it's going to grow me into into corporate and instead it made me feel more confident to go on my own so so those are the th- so for me entrepreneurship was a readiness thing it wasn't a wasn't a i'm fed up of this life let me jump on this one i like corporate it was it was really fulfilling well, you could have stayed the world. There. yeah i could i could have that's but, what i'm saying but but that's what i'm trying to say so for me entrepreneurship was a readiness decision and it was a conversation around with myself around if i did this and failed am i better off than where i am today Forget success. Success is a no-brainer. Everybody talks about when I have Facebook, it will, yeah, when you have Facebook, if you yeah. have Facebook, forget that. Yeah. If you don't, is the traje- is the is trying to buy the jets worth it? Right? If it is, if that journey is worth it, then you're not afraid of failure because you're already set out to say even failure is valuable. How do you fail then? Yeah. How do you lose? You don't lose. When you go in with the mentality of saying, even when I went into entrepreneurship, failure, the value of failure, I was sitting in a room with a bunch of entrepreneurs that failed before and they were super successful and I was learning from them. That helped me in my personal mindset. That was invaluable. I see completely different. Like the, the <laughs> and, and don't you feel like um, things are not set out to be, um, to lose nowadays? Like people don't, nobody likes to lose. But I'm saying nowadays because um, every, everybody's exposed. You are, you know, like social media and LinkedIn and this. And everybody knows where you are, where, you, where you're doing, no where you're working. Who cares? You, no, you got there because you know what losing and winning means. But like to take that initial step and jump, that's why I'm saying escape, Once you realize jump. you're not the center of the world yeah, and no one yeah. cares about you, once you realize that, like genuinely yeah. realize that, it's actually freeing. Once you realize that no one really cares about your failures, they'll mm. only really care about your success because they want to learn from it. Mm. That's, that's quite a, a freeing feeling, right? No one cares. Literally, genuinely, no, no one, one cares, nobody no. cares. Nobody cares. You're just a news cycle. Even the news, they call it a news cycle. Yeah. Well, 24 hours, people forget about it because something else comes up. Yeah. No one cares. Everybody's in, involved into their own business. Very often, I was asked this question with one guy that I really, really look up to, a very, very strong businessman. I won't name him. Okay. But... I, I, I came up with a presentation. He looks at me, he's like, no, you got to strip this down. You got to do it faster. You got to do it this. You got to do it that. And he asked me two questions when I said, no, but we can. Go, Why not? Who cares? And very often, the answer to that question is yourself more than anybody else. No, one, no one's paying attention, right? So that's highly, when you realize that, you're free. And now when you're free, 
and you're not afraid of what people might think of you, genuinely, this is not a, like, it might sound like a Gary V uh, footnote, but it's so genuine, dude, you don't understand. Once you understand that no one cares, good or bad, it strips you from fear, and it also strips you from wanting to impress anybody. Can I say there is a price for it to get to that mentality? It's not just having that thought or thinking about it. Like Dude, that the, the price for it is you've done stuff yeah, in order to get to that. I to, order and, to understand. It's not just like I tell you something. I failed yeah. and it cost me money. That's what I'm saying. But here's where here's where I contextualize money, and I did another video on on Facebook on that. Here's mm. where I contextualize losing money. So I'm out, and this is why we talked about this right before the podcast. I'm out to have a shot at a perhaps legacy or a life changing success yeah and if both happen awesome yeah that's what i'm out for when you are out for that small wins or losses don't mean anything but what i'm trying to say in a grand scheme of things yeah your life won't get altered by winning or losing five thousand dollars it won't change the course of life it won't change your lineage's lifestyle it won't change once you put that in context small failures Right? And again, I don't want to bring back the uh, so fifty thousand dollars might meet the world for some. So this isn't. Don't look at the amount of money. I'm just telling you, you know, fifty for you might mean five for someone else. Yeah. Right. So yeah. within your realm, don't look at your losses that you've went out there for to change your life. Don't look at them as life ending if they lose, because if you succeed, your life changes. If you mm. fail, your life really doesn't. Do you get my point? Yeah, yeah, so there's yeah, a very yeah, small yeah. price to failure and a huge reward to success. And I think that a lot of people lose that perspective, right? If you look at 21, you lose $30. It's the end of the world. Right now, if you do, mm, really? Yeah, it won't yeah. change much, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. So, and I think, and right now, if you think about that $20 10 years ago, Really? Why were you so worried about it? Because now you realize that it hasn't changed your life. Yeah. Now I spoke Arabic. Oh, wow. Right. So <laughs> I think holistically is if you, put, if you put things in context of the now, things are scary. Right? If you put things in context of, of, of your life in the next 40, 50, 60 years, mm. it, it doesn't matter what yeah. No matter what, yeah. Yeah, I don't, Ramel, like, again, I, I don't mean 50, because 50 could be life-changing for some, so I don't mean, yeah. don't take it at that number. Uh, if, if, if a big number is, is 5,000 for some, then that's great. Yeah, Let's I talk about 5,000, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't want to get like, completely grabbed. Yeah. Like, Who the hell do you think you are? I'm not living in a bubble. I'm, I'm very kind of... Yeah. So, and I think putting things in perspective is what people really lack. When you put things in perspective, a lot of worries... Here's a perfect example. How old are you? 28. Uh, you graduated university? Uh, dropped out. In okay. The middle of, but yeah. so, so people watching this, mm. you're doing an engineering degree? Engineering no, degree? Nothing. Somebody doing an engineering degree? You're doing your math exam yesterday? You can sleep? You can, you can fathom the, the thought of failing that math exam because life will stop? You're 28 now? That exam that you worried about 15 years ago, yeah. does it really matter today? No. At all? At all. Does your life change? At all? So when you put things in perspective, there's so many 19-year-olds listening to this right now that are dying to get, to get it right on their exam. I promise you, you get it right, your life is not going to change. You get it wrong, your life is not going to change. It won't. It won't. It won't, yeah, true. But you don't know that when you're 19. No, of course. Of I course. didn't know that when I was 19. Yeah. And it's so easy for me to say now. It's so easy for you to say now. And the problem is not everybody is going to adopt it. And those who do adopt that mentality win right now. Those who are 19 who are listening to this right now, and I, I realize that it's not the end of the world. The world's not going to stop. Your life is not going to change. The course of your life will not change, will not be impacted at all. Seriously, there are, you've had sleepless nights of an important exam. Yes or no? And I still get dreams, nightmares about my, dream, uh, my high school exams that, uh, oh, I think. That don't mean, <laughs> that yeah. don't mean anything to them. <laughs> yeah. right? Like how naive were yeah, you, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. That's, that's a... Cycle of life. Everybody goes through that process. I would like. I would like to add something that uh, I, I will tell you. Like my relationship with, with failure is because I failed a lot, so I start. You know what I mean? Like when you have a bully in school, or you like you, you meet somebody you don't like each other, you have to fight. 
And then you become friends. And then after you become friends, you both do something together. Like, and that's, that's failure to me. Like, we fought and it's horrible and a bad feeling. But then we became friends. I'm like, yeah, if I that fail. That sucks. Look, it's, I fail. It's okay. Like, yeah. if I fail, uh -huh, I've tried something. I had a good conversation with you. It's, yeah. it's what you make out of it. And yeah. you, sometimes you need to realize that you will figure it out. And you don't have to figure it out now. You can figure it out along the way. Failure sucks, man. It's not like I'm not preaching, go out and fail and it's perfectly fun. But it, it sucks there and then as long as you understand that no yeah, matter you have, what you have to get your ego in check. And that's what I'm saying. You, you will fail, but if it really massively touches you, then you know that your problem is not the failure. So you have huge ego to deal with. Deal with your ego, lose again, see how much it affects you. Then you know with, where, is, where is your ego now. Yeah, your but, ego but I mean, uh, look, fail, failure is not a fun feeling. It's right? not. Right, but the, the point I'm trying to make is if because you of ego, why do, why why else do we care about failure? It's just ego. Like society is looking at us. My mom, my dad. It's just Th that's normal, right? Yeah. But it's also like sometimes um, you have high hopes, right? So you you your hopes get. For me, it's not so much what people think. Is man, uh, but what hopes? It's ego, and ego is not in a harmful way, not in a bad yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's the definition of right, ego. Right, right. So the, the point I'm trying to make is is failure sucks then and there and I promise you five years down the road you're going to look back and say man was I naive to think about this was a big deal like, mm. and probably five years from now you're going through a much bigger failure and saying that was nothing today is oh, so much bigger and then five years from now you'll yeah. be thinking about so at the end of the day if, if you, you understand that failure is part of success is part of it is an integral part of it it takes 10 years to be an overnight success they tell you this Yeah, that's the truth Right, that's the honest to God truth. And I'm still part of that 10 year journey. I'm not where I wanna be, right? I'm not trying to fake it till I make it. I haven't made it. I'm not where I need to be, right? And the only judge I have is me. Yeah, I don't, yeah. if you think I'm way ahead of, I couldn't care less, yeah, good yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah. I don't think that I've made it yet. And that's all that matters. Yeah. And when I feel I made it, that's all that will matter. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. personal, my personal target, my personal goals, irrespective of what people are gonna think. Right. So and, and it's always it's so I did a video on that. It's so relative. Right. I feel uh, compared to compared to a 17 year old. The look at me. I made it compared to Will Smith. I'm a speck in the ocean. Will Smith compared to Oprah. He's a speck in the ocean. It's always relative. Mm. So when success is relative to the outside, the only thing that really matters is on the inside. That's the only thing that actually matters because no matter who you show me, I'll show you something 10 times bigger by society's conventional wisdom. Right? I see. Yeah, yeah. So, right. Because whether you equate success in money or uh, money, I'll find you richer. Uh, 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 if it's smarts, I'll find you smarter. If it's experience, I'll find you people with more experience. If it, so on and so forth. Right. At the end of the day, if success is is comparing, you'll never actually be successful ever. Success is only internal. That feeling. So you compare I, yourself to you. Exactly. Yeah. Am I where I feel I need to be? Right. Yeah. yeah. And if and there's people that. Take it the other way. So am I where I feel I need to be? No, life's unfair. That's mm. a sense of entitlement. Yeah. Am I, am I where I need to be? No. What do, I, what do I need to do about it to get where I need to be personally? Yeah. Right? Dr. Jordan Peterson said that so don't compare yourself to somebody else today. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Yeah. Because if you compare yourself to somebody else, then it's just, it's not going to end. But it's that gonna comparison, be worse, yeah. you're always going to be better than some and worse than others. Yeah. It's just a never ending cycle, man. Right? Mm, mm, if mm. you want to be fulfilled, what makes you happy? What will make you feel fulfilled? What will make you feel successful? And go after that. Yeah. yeah and that's yeah, yeah. it. Because otherwise it's very relative. Okay. I'm going to say that one thing and you will say that one thing and we'll end the show by there. I'm going to say my one thing with anything in life with starting something and moving on to things and is where I agree with Gary Vee 100%. I love that point about him is like, I love failure. Like I love failure. I really love it. And I, I, I think it's like, ooh, it's just giving me that feeling. Oh, wow. I failed. Now on to the next thing. Like if I fail, 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 finish, خلاص, it's a kernel of Now I know, alhamdulillah, okay, I can move on to something else and I can try. I don't, I don't care. I genuinely don't care because I've failed so much and I, I look forward to my next failures because every time you learn something new and just, I know that one thing, even if I die as a failure, I know that I've done so many things and I know how that works and how that doesn't work. What's your thing? You don't have to figure everything out right now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You don't have to figure it. That's my thing. Mm. It's, it's, um, you don't have to have it all figured out okay. right away. Okay. Because if you're the whole, uh, if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah. 
those are people that probably mm. haven't actually executed. They're still in planning mode. Mm. I'm not saying don't plan. I'm not saying don't think. But I'm saying you don't need to have it all figured out because mm. reality has a way of bringing you down to earth. Right? I've launched businesses where I thought theoretically it will go A, B, and C. And like two days later, figure it out that this will never, ever, ever work that way. And I need to pivot and I need to change. Right? It's good to have a basic plan. But it's also good to understand that action and your learnings from that action is how you respond and how you adapt that matters a lot more than how ready you were. If you're ready and everything works out because you're ready, that's, you, that's, that's, that's sheer luck. Right? If you're ready and it messes up and then you figure out a way out of it and then it messes up and you figure out a way to adapt and then you messes up and then you learn and you adapt and then you succeed, that's reality. That's exactly how it happens. So don't over plan, don't overthink, don't over, you know, uh, 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 hypothesize. Just go out and act and figure it out along the way because you're smart enough to do that and just know that you are and you're smart enough to figure it out. And then you, you start connecting the dots as you start getting closer to, to your end goal. So not, for me, that's, the, that's a big thing is just do it and figure it out later. Beautiful, beautiful. Amar, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank bud. you. That was great. Sorry if the no, voice it was, was great. Like on and off halfway through. <laughs> Guys, if you like that, please subscribe and um, see you next time.